we're waiting to see that uh, we're coming online. You are live. It says, but I don't trust that, so give me a second. Okay, good. We are online. So, uh, this is the headlight elevator out of my spare parts van. It's a 1999 uh, Nissan Vanette. Uh, also known as the LDV Cub in the UK and uh, uh, could be some other thing. Oh, you have a Nissan Serena, it's known as as well. And uh, these do not work. Uh, on my van, I have troubleshooted uh, as far as known that I have good signal going to the plug and that all the wiring is fine. Uh, but uh, on these ones, I really don't know what's wrong since uh, I've not done any troubleshooting on the spare part of the vehicle, uh, just on my normal van. And for obvious reasons, I can't have my work van uh, out of headlights for very long, so I've never had time to get at it until now. So we're just going to take this apart, basically, and to see what's inside. So uh, these are obviously rather simple devices. Uh the way this works is we have an electric motor inside and we have six pins here uh, the controller works by just applying voltage to uh, I think for the ground on one pin and uh, it'll just apply a voltage at one of the other pins in order to set the position uh, it's a very electromechanical system it's not electronic uh, so these are very dumb uh, the feedback loop for how much to adjust the headlight is internal to the motor assembly uh, and I think these ones are seized. Uh, so on vans, you really want to have these working because uh, you, depending on your cargo, your headlights are going to be pointing too high or too low. Uh, but if you ever use, most people who buy vans just don't give a toss. Uh, so they uh, just leave them at like the middle setting and uh, never touch them again, causing the motors to seize. And uh, uh, I believe in these we have a worm drive because I can visit a part that attaches to the headlight lens. If I twist this, it'll go into the unit and just get, get shorter and shorter. So that's one of the uh, maximum excursions and uh, this is going to be the other direction. Uh, and uh, really there's no play in it. Uh, since this is a worm gear, uh, being able to do that probably indicates that the motor is seized. So let's just see if we can get inside of this and have a look. I've fixed uh, a few of these headlight elevators in the past, not for this particular model, and I don't even think I've been inside one of these particular ones, uh, but uh, you can usually uh, just uh, lube the motor up and it'll work again. Uh, I have no idea if that's going to be the case here. I'm a bit skeptical since uh, we have, we probably just have a, an electromechanical system in here for setting uh, for setting the position. So if this seizes uh, there's probably no overload mechanism, there's probably no fuse inside so the motor is just going to keep drawing current being overloaded and finally uh, go up in flames and turn open circuit and if that's happened then we're just screwed uh, there's nothing to do about that but uh, we'll see rather shortly it should be very obvious if uh, that's what's going on someone asks is it just for cameras for the layer of green mold on the ca casing uh, it's just dirt because this goes in the front of a vehicle uh -huh. Now that's fancy. That is so much fancier than I dared expect. So what do we have? Wow. Above all, this is a lot cleaner than I was expecting. We have an electrolytic capacitor. We have one TY93A59P chip also labelled XAD9819, I have no idea what that is. Uh, cap is a, a Samwa 50 volt 47 mic. This is probably an over voltage device. Or a, a fuse actually, could be a fuse in series. And uh, I think this could be our only issue actually, because uh, 
uh, these are oxidized. These are actually very oxidized and uh, this metal clamp clamping everything together is just completely rusted since there's been moisture ingress. Huh. So these are going to be the pins going down to the motor or a small capacitor probably. Now this could be this could be some form of resonator in case this is some kind of processor. Wow. That's that's a very very fancy, but uh, I want to get this board out. The uh, soldering issues on automotive boards is uh, very, very common. So even if the actual problem is, ah, it's melted in, so we're going to have to uh, destroy those and glue it back. Uh, the, um, the soldering issues on uh, automotive devices are a huge problem, so I probably want to re resolder some of this stuff, uh, even if it might be something else causing uh, these to fail. Uh, keep in mind, I, d I don't know if this one's actually failed. Uh, uh, the spare parts of van uh, doesn't have a button to control this. The previous owner's gotten rid of it. So I'm assuming he's done that in order to sneak it past inspection because if these have failed on a van, uh, you get penalized. You don't, you're not allowed to drive a van with a failed headlight elevators in Finland. So he's probably taken the button away uh, just to make it seem as if it never had them to begin with and then it's okay because it would be uh, you're not forced to retrofit stuff. Well that's cancer. Ugh. Jeez, oh, that's, that looks sickly. So if we turn this, yeah, that's a worm drive there. So that's all the motion we have. Oh, that motor, oh, that's horrifying. Man, yeah, you don't want to see, jeez. Oh, the poor thing. This looks like some kind of warts. I think that yeah, it's just losing. Ugh. You. This makes me nauseous. All right, so that's an obvious issue. We're going to have to unseize that motor. And uh, let's have a quick look at uh, the PCB. In the meantime, I'm going to have to get a loop. I've actually got something really fun coming soon. A new tool to the workshop that uh, uh, we're going to have quite a bit of fun with, I do think. Oh, thank you, Horse Taku, for your two, do two US dollars. That was very kind of you. I didn't even... <laughs> I, 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 I've even forgotten the super chat thing exists. I'm not want to usually use those features. But yeah, this board, looking at it through my tiny loop, uh, really has seen some moisture. There's a lot of corrosion, uh, rubber oxidation on the uh, Solder joints, they have all small and white and prickly, <coughs> clearly because we've seen water ingress. And also, we have some uh, dirt on the uh, feedback circuit. So, this is obviously the electromechanical system for adjusting the headlight. So, as the I think we'll probably have, yeah, we have two contacts here. So, as these rotate. They connect the middle ring to the outer contacts, and once that happens, it uh, probably just disengages the motor. So the chip probably just senses when there's a pulse coming on one of those, and then it stops running the motor. Is the whole motor actually powered by this chip? Jeez. Uh, this thing looks really special and hard to get your hands on, so let's hope this isn't destroyed. Can we gain any insight from this red thing? 
two two z three. This one's going to be a capacitor. Can be a capacitor. I'm bad with my round circular devices. Let's see if it'll just measure resistance. If if it measures resistance, it's probably there's some kind of overcurrent protection device. If it measures uh, anything else, it's probably just a capacitor. 7.6k air. We're gonna have to Google this. 22Z3. Looks like some form of polyfuse. What's Google got to say? Or rather, duck, duck, go. 22Z3. TT. My keyboard is not working. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. I am expecting my keyboard to work. Why is my keyboard not working? It's plugged in. Air. Come on. Everything else in that USB hub works. Give me a keyboard. There we go. Right. What's it? TTZ3. Let's see what Google has to say. Oh wow, there's a lot of hits. That's good. A metal oxide varistor, according to datasheet archive at a glance. So that should measure open circuit, so that's good. It's just uh, over voltage protection to protect the chip. So since that's reading 7K, uh, that's probably likely to be a resistor across that. So uh, this is unlikely to be a culprit. culprit. Uh, I would wager uh, this capacitor is going to be fine as well, but if we can measure that, that will get rid of some of this dirt. Ugh, yuck, yuck. Down on the floor you go. I have my magical proprietary capacitance tester somewhere around here. Yeah? It's even plugged in. So let's see. I don't have my screen capture set up, so you'll just have to trust me when I give you the measurement on this cap. And the capacitor measures. I'm betting it's been, gonna be fine. It's not fine. This capacitor measures how much no I'm measuring I'm measuring the wrong thing. Yeah. 1 ohm 43 microfarads. And that's not perfect, but uh, it's good enough. Someone in chat is asking, uh, what's the story behind this thingy? Uh, this is the headlight elevator for my spare parts van. And these are broken on my normal work van as well. Uh, so I'm intending to fix these from the spare parts vehicle and uh, install them. Uh, so that I have a headlight elevation and my van is not illegal anymore. Because uh, since Finland is so dark, uh, we're rather strict about uh, uh, the quality of vehicles traveling our roads because uh, when it's icy and dark, uh, people tend to die on the road, especially the vehicles are bad and it's very easy to control for the quality of vehicles uh, much harder to control for the quality of people driving them so we choose to control the vehicles but yeah what more do we have here a couple of diodes yeah I'm gonna wager this board is just fine uh, and the, the issue is gonna be the elephant in the room so that's probably a 12 volt motor let's turn on the power supply and give it 12 volts Uh, if, if I'm if I'm a skilled cameraman, I might even be able to get a power supply on camera for it. 
There we go. And the logo is a bit unreadable, but we can, like, put that over there. There we go. Not as fancy as Louis Rossman's on-screen display stuff, but hey, we're on a much smaller budget. So we'll give this, uh, let's just turn it down to zero, current limit of one amp-ish, 0.6 amps. And uh, let's see what goes flying when we turn the voltage up. It is drawing current. That's very, very good. It's drawing current but not turning. So this mate is just seized. It's not burnt. That's good. So if we can get this out of here, we can probably uh, restore it to some sort of working order. Ah, oh, I am so relieved about that. Where are my pliers? I've, oh. My pliers are somewhere around the house since I've been doing stuff everywhere. So, how does this come apart? I think this axle just kind of pops out. And uh, this is all made out of plastic. Not too confident in installing. The motor's going underneath, turning this gear, turning that gear, turning that gear, turning the worm drive, which makes the rod go in and out. So you could repurpose this into like a very high torque sex toy if you wanted to. How is that attach? So there's a hole or rather some sort of latch on there. So we need to prod that out and probably that as well at the same time to give this out. And that's, that is annoying. That is quite annoying because this is probably rather brittle by now, being 20 years old, well, 19 years old. I'll give it a go. Maybe we can just, see if I get my hands dirty, if I pull that and bend this, we can make the rod pop out. Ah, ouch. It's very hard to pull this rod. A very hard rod to pull indeed. Gosh. Man, I do not want to destroy this. I really don't want to destroy this. This is where we just learn live. <laughs> this is not too much fun. We can get rid of a. No, we can't get rid of a gasket. That's annoying. This gasket is all screwy as well. Man, how do we? sort of this out. Probably easier if we can get rid of this as well, but I'm not sure that's practical. I actually have no idea how the black gear is held in. Hmm. Someone says wrap a loop of wire around it. Uh, like, that's not really the problem. The problem is bending this plastic. It uh, It is uh, positively held in place by a hole in each of these plastic rods. So just using brute force is not going to help. What we need to do is bend the plastic uh, far enough to make it pop out with very little effort. But that's difficult. That's really rather difficult. Especially since we're trying to do it without destroying the rod. Or should I say gear? So 
someone in chat says a regular small DC motor, it must be a small window. It's not a window regulator, it is a headlight elevator. Headlight elevator, window regulator, not the same thing. And yes, indeed, a headlight is much lighter than a window. This just uh, adjusts the angle of the lens. Now if we squeeze the case, it gets slightly longer. So we can squeeze there. Maybe we can clamp that in a vise and rip at it at the same time. Oh yes. This is a 30 euro Lidl vice and it's uh, the best 30 euros I ever spent in my entire life. If you can get your hands on the 30 euro Lidl vices, do. They are amazing. Like I have a, a several hundred euro vice. Uh, that's nowhere near as uh, good as this. Oh, well, no, it, it's we're about the same class really. But that means that uh, the Lidl vice is playing well above its price range. Right, so now we've squeezed that, making the case slightly longer. Hey, there we go. The rod is eight. Oh, that's a nice, long, greasy rod. I like my rods long, thin and very greasy. Right, so that ought to allow us to get the motor out. <coughs> that is barely held in place. So we can probably pop that rather easily by just uh, prodding it. Pop. So there we go. That's our sad, sad motor. Now we probably need to disassemble this quite a bit in order to actually get anywhere. Let's wipe the excess grease off just to keep it slightly neat. Oh, that's... <laughs> That, that, that was properly seized. I actually just grabbed it and unseized it by accident. Oh, listen to that. Ugh. This actually feels fine now. Eh? Uh, except for that. <laughs> except for that uh, squeaky part. This actually... Whoa. <laughs> oh, look at all that. That all just came out of the motor as I turned it. Wow. Yeah, I think we've pretty much fixed this now. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure if we put, uh, let's say, 4 volts across this, 4.5, uh, this is going to turn now. Play head shibets. The output isn't on. And it doesn't turn. Well, that's a disappointment. Hey, there we go. Oh, that sounded bad. Yeah, it works. Uh, electrically, it's sound, so we just need to clean it up a bit. Get rid of... Ugh. Ugh. Get rid of all the garbage. We can probably just use some form of brush to do that, but I don't have anything nice at hand, I don't think. Uh, do I have some? Oh man. I'm looking for some of that soft sandpaper stuff, but I have nothing. 
I have lost all my soft sandpaper stuff, which is bad. This workshop is in such horrible disarray. But uh, hmm. uh, I kind of don't want to disassemble this any more than I have to because these DC motors are no fun getting back together. Like I, it's crimped there and there. So if we uncrimp that to rip the back plastic off, it's uh, it's not going to be pretty. Getting that back on is going to be a proper pain. So since it's turning this well. Uh, I think I'm just going to clean the A side off with some sandpaper or something if I can bloody well find it around here and uh, filled up with a bunch of grease and lube whatever we can fit inside there oil and uh, I'll be happy with that where the hell has all my sandpaper gone? Seriously. Oh, there we go. I found it. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff I was looking for. You call this beer's tongue in Swedish. I have no idea uh, what uh, this actually is called in proper. Queen's English. It's like uh, the bottom of a sponge, basically. So let's just clean this up. That's screaming in agony. People are talking about WD-40. No, I'm, I'm not a believer in WD-40. We're going to use some proper lubricants, greases and oils and stuff. WD-40 is, well it says for, it's something like water driving 40. It's made for getting rid of moisture. Haven't you guys watched MSD3K? WD-40 is not a lubricant. Uh, this is cleaning up relatively nice actually. There's just so much crap coming off of this. Ugh, there's dust flying everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna go... That's actually cleaned up rather nicely. I'm going to go blow this out with some compressed air, so uh, this is a warning to all headphone users, you uh, probably want to take some distance between your ear and your headphone in about 3, 2, 1. Okay, we're done with the horrible noises. That was a proper cloud of dust coming out of this thing. So there was assuredly quite a bit of rust in, still left inside it. Let's clean this horrible rusty mess up. Oh, that came from our poor, poor abused motor. 
It has not aged gracefully. So now the challenge becomes how to actually lubricate this. We could like just drop this in oil and let it sit for a while. That could actually be our best solution. Someone in chat asks, would you want to try and repair a GTX 1080 for me? Uh, send me an email or a YouTube message. Uh, right, so... I'm not happy just lubing this up and putting it in there. I want to clean the inside out, inside out further. Now the question is how do we do that? with any sort of efficacy. <laughs> Someone said use WD-40 as a cleaning agent. Now that could be an idea. We could just basically flood this with WD-40. That would probably uh, probably do it some good. It would cover the entire inside with a somewhat water resistant film as well so that's actually not that bad of an idea now well, let's see if i have any wd-40 lying around here we could actually go for that and uh, i'll just leave it lying for a while we'll have to end the stream here yeah, once that happened because that's not going to be particularly interesting to watch i have a tiny can of wd-40 I have all kinds of things. All kinds of things in the back room, which you're, you're not allowed to see. We have Vaseline and brake cleaner and... Hmm. Yeah, let, let's, let's just try the WD-40 idea. We're going to need some form of tub to put it in as well. I'm sure we can arrange some sort of tub of some description. I have one that's full of sugar and that's not going to do us any good. We don't need that thing to be full of sugar. Containers. I've had a bunch of small containers, but I have no idea where they are now. We really need the tiniest of containers in order to not waste too much WD-40. Yeah. I found a glass, but it was full of brake fluid. We really don't need brake fluid in that motor. That's not going to make anything better. Well, how can I not have a small container? Oh, I know. I know exactly where I can find a small container. Which will do the job very nicely. Full of stuff, but uh, screw that stuff. I think this is perfect. The perfect size for a motor. So yeah, let's just uh, spray this down with a tiny 100 mil can of free WD-40, and uh, yeah. Let it dry or sit in that overnight. I'm hoping it's not going to just destroy the plastic backing of the motor. That would be bad. We could also just like run the motor and uh, f 
while it's bathing in WD-40. That's probably going to do it good if we can figure out a tool to get it back up of a tub. I have, like, since I have a spare part of vehicle, I have two extra of these motors. So if we ruin this one, it's not a huge deal. Like, we'll just uh, take what we learned and uh, apply that to the others. We should pro probably also try not to set this on fire. So. That's turning. Oh, there's, there's trash coming out of that. There is dirt coming out of that. Man, that water is turning all kinds of colours. WD-40 on there. Oh man, this, the colour of this is just turning, well it's turning the same colour as my bench, so you can't see it, but to me this is just horrifying. We could probably put some oil in there as well. Like, yeah, I think I have some gearbox oil lying around. There's supposed to be a can of, small canister of oil on the workbench at all times, but uh, that's not where it's supposed to be, so... Yeah, gonna have to find something else. I'm thinking some kind of thicker oil, just like, yeah, gear, gearbox oil is probably gonna work well, if I can find any. Let's see. Uh, I found like a packet with a tiny, tiny amount of gearbox oil in it. We'll just mix that in with the stuff. I'm sure that's good. Uh, Someone asks, how much force do you need to apply to break a PCB in a GTX? Like a graphics card, that depends entirely on what you're doing. Ah, uh, yes. Oil. Glob, 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 glob. And that's completely submerged. And we have a little <laughs> cog making a stir of that. That's put, oh, let's not... Let's not get that everywhere. It's slowing down, that's good, that means the oil is actually getting somewhere. Oh, that's just turning so nasty. Stirring that. Uh, guy keeps talking about repairing his GTX 1080 and send me a message like I, I can't keep up with your graphics card in the chat. I can barely keep up with a graphics card or the chat at all. Since my hands are all oily and horrible. I probably want to... Oh no, we don't need any more oil in there. It's fine. Let's turn off the voltage for a bit and see hey, if it stops screaming at us. 6 volts, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 volts. Probably a little pump going in there. It's 
spraying oil everywhere. I think this is going to turn out just fine. So, yeah. Someone says, YouTube deleted IM on YouTube. Well, I have a, an email address listed on my channel page, which anyone can access and send me an email on, so that's not an excuse. So, Chillyhead1987, I, I might be able to check out your graphics card, especially once I get my new toy. Yeah, but uh, send me an email. And if you can't find it on YouTube, my work email is uh, ffcosag, as for channel name, at gmail.com. Uh, I am so relieved that uh, this motor is not uh, completely destroyed. I was basically prepared for it to uh, be seized and burnt like beyond salvage because the wine it would be destroyed but this is turning just fine so I'm going to leave this running on the side at 5 volts for a while uh, while we just reflow everything on the PCB just to have that done and over with so we don't uh, have to worry about anything going bad on a PCB I'm not going to replace the capacitor because that measured just fine both impedance and capacitance why so that's not going to be an issue yeah, but before we get there I'm going to take a quick, ga quick gander at the chat so since there's been so much activity going on Well, I've asked for WD-40 stuff. Running his kink machines again. He's locked the women in the basement, someone says. Uh, no, I am in the basement right now and you can't hear the screaming, can you? Perhaps I've just gagged them well. Someone says, problem with too much grease is that stuff will collect instead of falling out. Kind of fine line to get it right. Yes, if you're dealing with an exposed system, thankfully, since this is a sealed thing, uh, we don't have that problem because nothing comes in. Well, except for water. And uh, grease fixes water, so we really can't over-grease this at all. Someone says, oil both ends, don't drench it. No, I'm drenching it because I want to be rotor to be lubed up as well, just to stop it corroding further. Saki Bugger says, I would suggest a 35mm film container, but I don't suppose you know what that is. I do know, and I actually have a few lying around, but I think there's film in them. And now we're back to the GTX 1080 stuff. So. That's it for the chat. Let's uh, just uh, give this PCB a quick work over. Just uh, reflow everything. Start by cleaning it out with pure isopropyl alcohol, which I should have. The mate is making funny noises at me. We don't want that. I'll turn down the power. It's probably not built to run for extended periods of time. That's running at 1.6 volts and like 100 RPM, so that's what to do. Now, where the hell's my alcohol? Ah, oh, there we go. Alcohol. Alcohol everywhere. Pure isopropyl alcohol. 
if you live in the EU, you can buy a like five liter jugs of the stuff on TME. I haven't received mine yet, but I put in an order, so hopefully I'm gonna get five liter jugs of alcohol soon. I'm hoping it's a good quality. I'm looking for some cleaning stuff. And I can't find my cleaning stuff, so... Where the hell is my cleaning stuff? I have a dedicated brush for cleaning stuff off of PCBs, but uh, it's lost forever, it seems. I should also have a couple of toothbrushes here, but they also seem to be lost forever. So we're just going to wipe this off with some paper because all my cleaning gear is lost forever. I'm just waiting to move this body workshop away. I am so tired of sitting in the basement. So the fact that uh, this uh, PCB has this IC in it is probably in its saving grace. Uh, because uh, if this had just been a pure electromechanical limit switch system, there would have been nothing there to stop the motor from burning itself out. Whereas uh, there's probably a time limit uh, in the IC which just limits the motor from running for too long. There's probably like a five second timer or something. So it's just going to run for a while and if it hasn't moved then, oh well, just going to turn off. So I'm not going to bother using, oh yeah we can put some flux on, just because I have flux. So I'm going to reflow, I don't know, pretty much everything on here because it's so oxidized. This flux is going to flow out everywhere so I'll just put it. Like a little here and a little there. Oh, this is, this syringe is getting old. It's hard to get out. Like that, yeah. It's no clean. We don't have to care. Now we have a nice huge tip on the soldering iron. So I'll just get to work on this. I have a new pen for the soldering iron, I just need to get around to installing it. This the first generation pen for these OE 2900 series irons is completely horrifying and mine never works right, but the new ones are nice. I'm noticing that uh, I haven't quite used enough solder on a few of these pins. There's just a big hole where the solder has uh, wicked up into the PCB rather than forming a nice fillet. It is a uh, plated fruit board so it doesn't quite matter, but uh, it doesn't look nice. I'm mostly reflowing and fluxing this to get rid of the, the corrosion that's on here. I have not spotted any bad solder joints on this at all. It's uh, surprisingly clean for being an old automotive thing. They're usually filled with broken solder joints, even if they are uh, plated through boards. You would not believe how common it is for solder joints to kill automotive devices. Uh, ECUs, window regulators, everything dies from bad solder joints. Just for stuff, usually it's the connectors that fall off. So you get intermittent operation of stuff. But in this case we have just no operation at all, so yeah, not going to be a bad solder joint cause of that. Oh, that's horrible and ugly. Uh, 
if I'd made it to a free hold stuff, now there's one more. Oh, that's not even a free hold component. Just a test pad. Oh, the Modo connections we probably want to do as well. Like so. Oh, this is turning it so, so incredibly ugly. Jeez, oh god, no, that's too, too bad. Too ugly even for me. My solder does not quite like the stuff they've used on the board, clearly. Does not get along too well. There we go. I think that's all of the through hole stuff. Enough of this anyway. So let's just check if we don't have any ridiculous amounts of bridges caused by that. Just from spluttering solder everywhere. Ah, I can't wait to get my new toy. Someone asked if a new toy is a mantis. No, I'm not rich. But uh, it's the same category of product. And I completely forgot one of the joints here in the corner. It is the same category of product as a mantis. And I splurged extra on it just for YouTube. So there we go, that's uh, the PCB cleaned up. This is going this is going to be fine. I I have very little doubt uh, this is going to work just fine. Uh, this is very clean for what it is, and we had such an obvious issue in the motor. So yeah, pretty much, I think we're done. I'm going to let this sit and soak overnight. Hopefully, the oil isn't going to dissolve my 40-year-old little tub. I'm going to call that a night. What a successful night has been. I was not expecting this to succeed at all, but here we have a turning motor. Oh, this is going to be such a relief. Someone asked, any conformal coating? Uh, no, no conformal coating on the board. They've assumed this to be uh, uh, hermetically sealed, but they've failed miserably. But yeah, we are done now. I'm going to call that tonight. I'm gonna go to bed or something like that. So I'm gonna have to thank you guys for watching and uh, make sure you enjoy yourselves. Bye.